It's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Hi and welcome once again. This is Reflections, a 15-minute broadcast that's designed to be a blessing to you, to encourage you, and to help you along your way as you serve the Lord. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to encourage you to make a decision to live for Him today. I want to pick right up from where we ended last week, Wednesday, talking about people who uh, really pass judgment on God because of what they see in the church or they've experienced with other people who claim to be Christians and so on. And I want to give a, a word of encouragement, maybe exhortation to, to you, anyone who may be in that situation, but also to, to Christians, because I, I find that a lot a lot of us i say us because i'm a child of god a lot of us are are lazy and and i i there's a verse i have here okay i'm not quite sure how this is going to come out today but don't worry about it uh, a verse that I, i've spoken about in the um series that i did on deception and it talks about yes it's first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 from the amplified it says but the holy spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in the latter times or the last days, some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach through the hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared or cauterized. And, and I, as I'm preparing this, this to, to share with you today, as I said, I'm not quite sure how it's going to come up. I've got stuff done on, 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 a, on a page but I'm not quite sure how it's going to come. I just know that we started with what we did last week, and, and, and I talked about going back to the source, going back to the source. So as I'm talking here, I'm saying uh, Christians, Christians need to go back to the source. A lot of our theology, a lot of our Christian practice is not taken from the Bible. It is taken from the pastor, and it is taken from other Christians. Uh, you don't have to agree with me, but that's my that's my opinion after being in the ministry for so many years. Too many of us come into the church and we simply follow what we see other people doing. Or we come into the church and our focus uh, is on other people and on the, the man in the pulpit or woman in the pulpit uh, when our focus should be on our source, all right, which is Jesus Christ. So, I just want to challenge you at the beginning of this message to go back to the source, go back to the Word of God, and build your Christian walk, your Christian practice on the Word of God. And, and I, the reason I say that, that many of us are lazy is because we don't we don't study the Word of God, we don't we don't uh, read the Word of God meditatively and and uh, dig into what things mean and understand what they mean. Um, if I may use and borrow a term and say something else at the same time, we are told, and I mentioned this last week, to follow the science. All right? Follow the science. This is in reference to COVID-19. And as we are told to follow the science, there is a scenario that comes with COVID-19 itself uh, where I, I have heard and seen people berate the many non-professionals who come online and spout things that they have not been trained in or have any experience in, but they are online and they're making all these kinds of statements. But here's my problem. Here's my problem. It's all right to tell me to follow the science, and I'm making a dual point here. It's all right to tell me to follow the science. But the people who are trained and have experience are perceived to be sending mixed messages. I say perceived, I'm being kind. But somehow many people believe that the people who should know are telling us lies. They're hiding information from us. They're not telling us things that could help when they could help. And some believe that the underlying reason is money. But whether or not it is perceived widely that these people, these scientists, are serving hidden agendas. Now, 
in some cases, and this is this is no, I can tell you this for a fact. Some of these scientists are speaking about things that they really have no scientific data to justify. This is in the context of COVID-19. Now let's let's come back into Christianity and the church. We are expected to know our God and to know what he teaches, right? But a lot of us don't. I remember uh, Dr. Holmes Williams wrote a book that he used for teaching in the People's Cathedral many years ago called uh, Know What You Believe. And I love the title, You Need to Know What You Believe. And, and here is where I have an issue. Uh, too many of us do not know what we believe. All right? Or we believe what we don't really know. Um, there's a gentleman, I can't remember if he's still alive or not, Josh McDowell. I believe he may have passed on by now. Uh, he wrote uh, two volumes called Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And this Josh McDowell, some of you don't know this, Josh McDowell was, uh, I don't know if he was an atheist, but he certainly was not a Christian. And he set out to disprove Christianity and ended up becoming a Christian and writing two very, very good uh, scientific when it's a scientific, factually based uh, works on the fact that God is real. It's evidence that demands a verdict. I remember as a young Christian, I became a Christian at age nine. And um, I served the Lord by faith because, you know, can't see him, don't know much about him. But I somehow believed that God was real, that he saved my soul. And I served the Lord by faith. Then I went to Bible school. I believe it was probably around age 21. And uh, when I went to Bible school, we had a, a particular class called apologetics, Christian apologetics. That's a defense of the faith. And by the time I was finished that class, before I was finished that class, I no longer needed faith to believe that God existed. I had all the evidence I needed to know that God was real. Uh, and I have not turned back. I've not gone back since then. So, so for me, you know, I follow the science. I found out uh, through factual information that God is real. I have to admit, uh, after being going through Bible school and being in ministry and teaching for thirty-three plus years, yes, there there are some questions that I have about the Bible and about God. There are some things I do not understand. There are some things I will never understand. But the fact is, there are things I don't understand. They make no sense to me. And there are actually things, this is a hard confession to make, that I have serious problems with when it comes to the revealed will of God in the Bible. You say the revealed, the general revealed will of God. There are things in the Bible I have very, very serious problems with. But, it does not stop me from knowing that God is real or serving him. There's too much evidence otherwise that I certainly would not want to go back on serving the Lord. So here, here's what, what we know. Philippians 2 verse 12 from the Amplified Bible says, Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent, work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, and fully complete your own, your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust, serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidity, or timidly, excuse me, shrinking from whatever might offend God, and discredit the name of Christ. Now, some may see that, and I'm at the bottom before I go back to the top, and they'll say, yes, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name. That's, that's all about fear and keeping people in bondage because of fear. And then I see another scripture that says that God is not slack concerning his promise, but is uh, long-suffering to us word. Because his will is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, if God is trying to scare us 
into serving him, then why would he say that he is long-suffering, he's extremely patient toward us because he doesn't want anybody to be lost, but he wants all to come to repentance. So I look at that, I have to balance it, okay, because, you know, I was told that God was a big stick God when I was growing up, and you make one mistake, and God is just waiting to clobber you over the head. But then as I got to know him better, and, and a lot of it came through, uh, teaching uh, on the, the characteristics or the attributes of God, when you begin to understand the character of God, who he really is, you begin to understand why certain things happen. Even though I don't understand all of it, or I certainly will never understand all of him, I know enough that I can work out my salvation. And you see, the scripture, the first scripture I shared that talked about in the last days, people will move away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You see this here, but work out your own salvation. That's how you save yourself from that. We talked about deception. I gave a whole list of things that will help you not to be deceived, to keep you from being deceived. But here's something practical for you that I want you to understand. If you will work out your own salvation, carry it out to the fullest goal, complete it. Um, with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust, serious caution. Be very careful about what you latch on to as your philosophy of life, as your theology. Be very careful about what you believe and what you say you believe. And, and also come to a place where you are able to defend your beliefs. I have to ask you this as I, I come to the last few minutes of this broadcast. What do you believe? What do you really believe? What, what do you really believe? Why? Why do you believe it? Why? why, why? Because the Bible says it? All right, okay, fine. But, but what is it you really believe? Can, can you state categorically to an unbeliever who is seeking and questioning, this is what I believe and this is why I believe it. Can you do that? You should be able to. And if you're not able to, you should be moving towards being able to share what you believe and why you believe it. I think that's extremely important. Uh, what is the source of your belief system? What is the source? Is your source your denomination? Is your source your church? Is your source your pastor? Is your source daily bread? If it is, you're in trouble. What is your source of what you believe? We are talking about uh, life and death issues. We're talking about eternal issues. So when this verse that is expanded and amplified says, listen, you work out your salvation with serious caution, with tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timid, timid, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God. Listen, this is not something that you play with. This is something that you take very, very seriously. As you're trying to work out your salvation, okay, I'm saved. What does God expect of me? I, I, I look into that with reverence and awe and trembling. Because if this thing is real, let me make sure I get it right on this side. Because I will have no chance to get it right on the other side. You see where I'm coming from? So we, we are... We are counseled by the word of God look you better get tie your salvation down make your calling and election sure because I'll say this to you one minute left I'll say this to you in the time in which we live in the last days in the last minute in the last moment that we are alive on this earth let me tell you something you are going to face more and more anti-christ philosophies practice, teachings, even laws. Laws will be enacted that are anti-Christ. You have to make sure that you have the backbone, that you have the knowledge, you have the wisdom and understanding in God that you cannot just face it, but you know the right thing to do. Hey, I hope this uh, little message has been a help to you in some way, has been a blessing to you. If you're not right with the Lord, please make yourself right with the Lord. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, and I will see you next Wednesday. God bless you.